everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms coming at you guys today from Take Aim Training and Range. And in a couple of videos, I have said, remember when the AR market was just way too saturated and companies like Springfield Armory introduced the Saint and we were kind of like, oh, okay, cool, another AR-15, that's neat. And the Saint's actually a really cool rifle. And then I said in a couple of recent videos because of current situations happening in the world that wouldn't it be nice if more manufacturers were actually making quality ARs? Well, our friends at James River Armory listened to us, and I'm here to introduce the JRM-15. And this is an AR-15 put together, built by, made by James River Armory, our friends right out of Burgaw, North Carolina, not too far away from where we're located. And I'm happy that they are now hopping on the AR market because like I said, these guys are actually kind of getting a little difficult to get a hold of. Granted, every now and then you might see um, a couple of ARs here and there, uh, but now we've actually got something with some pretty nice parts and features that uh, we can show off here. But the video is not just about the JRM-15, it's kind of about how to customize your AR because when I saw this guy sitting a little naked in the box, it doesn't come with the Vortex Strike Fire, it comes optics ready, right? And I saw it sitting there and I was like, man, I have just an, a complete vision of how I would turn this thing into my own custom AR. And uh, because I've done that with a few now, and I've got Ryan's LWRC over here, which is more similar to this guy since it has an M-Lock rail and everything. But what I wanted to do is kind of show you after you make your initial purchase with your AR-15 and you want to customize it some, what all can you do? So we're going to talk about it. But first, I kind of want to shoot this guy and, uh, you know, get a, my first couple of shots with it on camera here. And we got a target set up right down range and let's just see how this guy shoots, all right? All right. All right, well, it seems to be tearing it up. Nice low recoil. I mean, it is a 16 inch uh, contour lightweight barrel with the mid-length gas system on it. 556223, so uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's gonna be nice and easy to shoot. It is chambered 556 NATO. You're not gonna be able to see that on the barrel. One and seven twist, very nice. Yeah, this guy feels really good. I also do really appreciate that they threw on that full length 15 inch M lock rail on it, which is nice because whenever you get that full length out there, you can actually get a hold a little bit further out. You can get that nice tactical C clamp going on if that's how you prefer uh, grip method. And it allows you to drive the rifle a little bit better and also allows you to help mitigate any type of recoil, which granted ARs, they don't recoil that much anyway, but if you can try to minimize the recoil as much as you can, why not, right? Yeah, one thing I do want to kind of talk about is just how flat shooting this gun is. I mean, those quick little bursts, again, not much, you know, <laughs> 556, 223, but it's nice. There we go. Nice. All right, so like I said, 16 inch barrel coming with your standard A2 front sight, or front sight, right? A2 bird cage right up here. No front sight, no rear sight. Like I said, optics ready, but you do have Picatinny running the full length of the upper receiver and the rail. Very nice. M lock all the way around. So uh, if you wanted to throw on any type of accessories, which we'll talk about here in just a moment, you can. Uh, let's see, what else we got going on here? Upgraded stainless steel trigger on it, which is pretty nice, about five and a half, six inch pound. Let's go ahead and just uh, actually show you guys what that's all about here. Safety selects, nice and intuitive. Good job there. And then let's just go ahead and fill this guy here. Single stage, applying a little bit of pressure. Nice, nice easy break. Short travel for sure. And let's go ahead and fill that reset. Nice quick reset too. So they did throw in a decent trigger in here too. Again, stainless, uh, single stage. Feels very good. Do have an ambi charging handle on it, nice. And then of course your adjustable M4 style stock. Uh, this guy here looks like it's a Tapco stock, also coming with 130 round Tapco magazine. And uh, this guy is super budget friendly, which is very nice, especially in these times, uh, because well, first off, finding ARs is difficult. And a lot of manufacturers have seen this thing called supply and demand take place. And we're starting to notice prices kind of tick up a little bit. But uh, James River, who initially, 
started off making some pretty cool iconic firearms, M14s, M1 Garands, things like that, and also, you know, refurbishing firearms like K98s and all sorts of other cool things, old school firearms that they've just taken and re -blued. maybe you've done refinishing on stocks and things, and just really turn already beautiful old guns into even more beautiful newer looking firearms it is awesome all right james river makes some great stuff and now they've hopped into a more modern market with this high speed looking ar-15 standard a2 grip which you guys know i'm not like the biggest fan of so let's go ahead and start talking about the customization of things all right First thing I typically do with an AR, I don't even actually switch out the grip or stock or anything. I make sure I get myself some good sights, right? So I did go ahead and throw on a Strike Fire 2 by Vortex. This is a nice red dot. Now on my personal firearms, I'm running uh, Trigicon stuff over here, EOTech stuff. You know, I like to spend a little bit of money, especially when it comes to optics, because I want to make sure that they're going to be running, running accurately, holding zero, things like that. And after our torture test on the EOTech, I feel pretty comfortable with it. You might have noticed too the optics setup that I have over here, Trigicon ACOG with an offset, Trigicon RMR. Again, all of these types of things aren't really necessarily needed, but a good optic setup and something where I can go in with a little bit of magnification, four power magnification to, you know, <laughs> six MOA just by a 45 degree cant is pretty awesome to have. And uh, I'm having a good time running it too. So I can get a little bit of distance, a little bit of close and have a lot of fun doing it, all right? Now, Vortex also makes some great stuff, and they also make the UH-1 holographic sight, which we torture tested in the same video with the EOTech, so go check that video out. Uh, but, all in all, invest in a good optic, or at least some good iron sights as well, because you never know if your optic fails you, batteries die, whatever else, you might forget to replace them, right? Some, some good iron sights, which I definitely recommend. LWRC comes with some pretty sweet iron sights as it is. There you go, you can check those out. But there's also all sorts of aftermarket ones out there. Some of them already have like luminescent built into the front side and rear, so you can, you know, low light settings, still pick up your irons, things like that. Uh, but ultimately, a good set of sights and a optic. Now you can choose to run LPVO, which is a low power variable optic, you know, scopes, whatever you want. Pretty much whatever you think your situation needs. If you're looking for just a good home defense rifle, honestly, we actually just covered a whole video on that, and this guy's pretty well set up for it, right? Now, some other neat things too, like I said before, this guy's got an M-lock rail on it and a full length, and when I say full length, I mean it's running the entire length of the barrel, just about just an inch shorter than the barrel. Uh, you've got all of these attachment options here. You can either choose to run a vertical grip way out front, like I typically choose to do, right? You can run a hand stop, like what Ryan has here on his LWRC, which is very nice, because on a rifle setup, you can use this right here to apply rearward pressure into the shoulder, and again, and help mitigate that already pretty low recoil on the AR platform, but now it's even more comfortable and a more stable shooting firearm. Pretty sweet if you ask me. Something else I completely recommend is a flashlight, and I mentioned this for a lot of reasons. Uh, a lot of guys, you know, I'll see a lot of you in the comments, a flashlight's a dead giveaway of where you're located. Okay, that's, that's cool and all. Uh, however, I'm not gonna be shooting at something I can't identify. So I get it, it works both ways, but I wanna be sure that whatever I'm shooting at needs to be shot at, all right? So we'll just leave it at that. Now you do have all sorts of M-lock mounts and attachment systems if you so choose to go that route. You'll notice here what we've got on this LWRC is an extension to move the flashlight a little bit closer to the muzzle so that way whenever you well, whenever Ryan eventually suppresses this guy, that suppressor isn't gonna be blocking so much of the light, all right? Pretty cool design, nice. Okay, so we've talked about a little bit about grip, uh, flashlight also too, pressure pads, things like that. Something real high speed like this guy here, where it's got a nice low profile, you've got good cable management, things like that. So that way it's easier to manipulate, right? With just your weak hand there. So boom, there you go. Not only is your weak hand there for support, but you can also quickly tap that pressure pad to light up whatever it might be that you need to light up with bullets. All right. <laughs> so other things that I typically like to recommend too, uh, look at other magazines as well, right? Like I said, this comes with a 30 round Tapco mag. Tapco's fine, they work, they work all right. Uh, but you can always choose to upgrade mags. You can always go for something like what we've got in the Honey Badger. 
<laughs> go for that nice thick boy, a Surefire 60 round mag, because why not? Magpul P mags, polymer mags work great, of course. I've got some Surefeed mags uh, for my Mark 18, another P mag, and the Colt M4. Magazines, totally recommend it. Grips, yes, absolutely, because I like to shoot comfortably in the A2. For a lot of people, it's not that big of a deal. Me, yeah, it ain't comfortable, right? So typically I am one to switch out the grip, but it's not sometimes the first thing I need to do because I can shoot with it just fine. But for comfort, I do like to switch on over to something like the B5 Systems grips that you see here on both my little M4 clone and the Mark 18. Uh, they have a little bit steeper grip angle, which feels a lot more ergonomic and comfortable to me. And I also decided to switch out the standard stocks on these guys. This guy came with your standard M4 stock, just like the James River is, uh, but decided to go with our B5 Systems stocks as well. These are the enhanced models because I am running battery powered optics. It's cool to have those battery tubes there you know and they're also waterproof so if you <laughs> decide to go diving with your gun you don't have to worry about water breaching your tubes and then all of a sudden you have dead batteries so all right cool stuff right again flashlights big check for the batteries and optics cool and then uh charging handles yeah i definitely would like to uh switch those guys out something ex uh extended or ambidextrous is always nice something that's just easier to get to right even if you need to go you know with your weak hand manipulation or strong hand manipulation, you know, you can do that, which is pretty cool. And uh, it's nice that James River has already included an ambi charging handle. So we're good on that front, right? I wouldn't even worry about switching that out. So sweet. Um, triggers are also something else that I look at changing out a lot because I run all sorts of different triggers. I do, I am a huge fan of Geisley, things like that. But if you're looking for just a base AR, a standard AR to keep, again, a new home defense rifle, truck gun, whatever you want to call it, uh, or whatever you want to do with it, that's fine. And I think the trigger that they've included in here, which is the stainless steel upgraded trigger, it's actually pretty nice. And I wouldn't even worry about switching that one out right away, unless you really want to completely customize this guy to whatever you're liking, all right? Continuing on, something else that I think a lot of people might miss a big thing is slings. Uh, slings are definitely uh, something I totally recommend. And a couple of you guys mentioned too in the comments section of our home defense setup uh, that I, I think you kind of missed the point of what I was saying. In a home defense situation, me personally, a sling is just something else that's gonna be getting in my way at that point in time. But if it's something that I'm gonna have on my body no matter what, then yes, I'm going to want a sling. And especially something that's gonna be nice and tight to the body. This McLean Corp uh, sling is actually pretty sweet. It's something that I've been testing out here recently uh, because it's got something pretty innovative on it and it's a single point sling which I'm typically not a fan of because it, if it's hanging in its single point position it and you're trying to move and go hands-on or whatever it just uh, winds up hitting areas it shouldn't hit but they've got this cool little latching system here that allows you to break free from this administrative mode is what they're calling it by doing that right there and now I'm free with my rifle and it's easy to go with, you know, weak hand transitions, whatever it might be. I don't feel like I'm getting suffocated by the sling or anything. And if I need to clip it back on because I need to work with my hands or whatever, simple enough to do that and go. And if I need to tighten it down and cinch it closer to my body, I can. If I need to loosen it up, I can. Pretty cool stuff. I, uh, so far I'm recommending it, uh, but granted, I don't have a whole lot of time run with it just yet, so we'll see how it holds up and the endurance. Uh, I do have a Magpul MS3 on this guy. Two-point slings are typically what I like to run, but McLean over here might have me uh, <laughs> going with something else, it looks like. But two points are nice because, especially the Magpul style, you also have like the Vickers Blue Four slings, things like that, where you can actually tighten it down and loosen it up, uh, whatever is comfortable for you at that point in time. I can loosen this guy up and then get right into the fight if need be, but if I need to have it held to my body a little bit tighter, tighten it up and adjust, and I'm good to go. Pretty cool stuff, right? <laughs> So slings, I definitely recommend, uh, but I don't think they're always 100% needed like in that home defense situation, right? But so far with the uh, couple of shots that I've had with the James River here, it's been working pretty good and I like it. And it's something here that's coming, like I said, when I opened up the box and I saw a mag and a rifle sitting there, I was like, oh, it looks good. Looks like they did a pretty good job with it. Nice anodization and everything else. Uh, but man, it just looks so bare. And it looks like a blank canvas. And if you are like to play tactical dress up like I do, or tactical Barbie, whatever you want to call it, you can just imagine, I'm seeing vertical grips, I'm seeing flashlights, I'm seeing optics, I'm seeing all sorts of things, grips and you know butt stocks and magazines and everything. So uh, yeah, you have 
All of this potential, and a lot of it can be found right on our Classic Firearms website, classicfirearms.com. So check out these James River ARs. I think they're gonna be pretty sweet, and uh, I think I'll keep this one around and keep shooting at some and uh, see if it even grows even more on me, all right? Last gun I wanna talk about, guys, is one that is uh, <laughs> pretty heavily customized as well. This is the Honey Badger pistol by Q, chambered in 300 blackout. And yes, this is a pistol as of right now. <laughs> this is a brace. And uh, if you're looking for more information about this guy and why I said as of right now, and in case you don't know about what's happening with this current firearm, go check out our video unveiling this as our giveaway. But right now, as of October 9th, there is a 60 day stay on the cease and desist that's out there on this pistol. So it's still a pistol for now. But if it does become an NFA item, Q has said that they're willing to pay the $200 tax stamp for this gun. So at the end of the day, you're getting either a free pistol or a free NFA item with the EOTech XPS3 Surefire 60 round mag, because why not? Geisley two stage trigger, which is very nice. Radian Raptor charging handle and all of that goodness right there guys so head on over to classicfirearms.com get your entries in and like i said in the unveil video too if you guys have any questions about this feel free to direct message me i'm more active on instagram than anything else magdump underscore morgan because mag dumping's great uh, so yeah feel free to do that guys live free or die in new hampshire good job q god bless you guys and uh, good luck on your fight guys god bless you as well we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com